In Birmingham's jewellery quarter, there is a factory, which started life as a brass foundry, but developed in a most unusual manner. Newman Brothers became funeral furnishers, and we clocked into Coffin Works to find out more. So let's have your afternoon shift, because you're doing an afternoon shift. Okay. So face it towards you, just put it down inside the slot. There's no force or anything, just push it all the way down to the bottom. Okay, and then see the handle on the right? Yeah. Push that down. Now, pull it out, turn the card around, <laughs> and you can see you've nice. clocked in for this afternoon. This particular building was built in the tail end of the 1800s, uh, and it was open for just short of 100 years. Back in the 1800s, what they're doing is they're making these by hand, wow. and through into the 1900s as well, they're making these by hand. Take a, a man about three weeks, depending on the intricacy of this thing, and he's using a cold chisel. So I now put some clay around the outside. Get out of my oven some of my molten metal, and what I do is I pour it within there. I'm going to put this into place. Uh, with a bit of metal that Cornelius has uh, nicely cut for me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull on this. When I pull on this, it's going to get noisier. This brake will then release. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down to about this level. And then what I've got to do is I've got to let it go, but catch it before it bounces. A perfectly embossed plaque ready for trimming on the press. The lady that worked on this one, she had such a right arm, it said that what happened was some of the men just got a little bit too, overstepped the mark occasionally, and what she did was she uh, sorted them out. <laughs> and stuff. The other things that you'll see a little bit later on, this, this particular machine is called a free air press, um, and what it does is it will take a uh, we've got the safety on it, but it will take a, a blank piece of metal and what it will do is it will put a 90 degree bend in. Now these are just for you know, going around the ends of coffins. Now this was the, the packing room uh, and what happens is whilst we've got a display of our goods, if you look at the table that's just over there, you notice that everything's either packed up in boxes or they're packed up in, in paper. Downstairs, we met a lady whose father had polished coffin fittings for Newman Brothers. It was the day of Winston Churchill's funeral. My dad stood up at the te in front of the television with a grey, horrible, horrible smelling cloth in his hand. And he said, there they go, there they go, there's my angle. So I've just presumed that he polished him with that cloth. Good morning, Miss Green, it's Terry calling. How are you this morning? Can I please order two dozen electro brass bevel breastplates and also 50 pairs of N7? When plastic coffin fittings and cheap imported goods eroded their market, Newman Brothers diversified. They began to supply everything the funeral director might need, including shrouds which were stitched on the premises. They needed to move forward, they need to move with the times. And therefore what they started doing was, in the late 50s, early 60s, they started making uh, shrouds that were um, suitable for different sorts of people. So rather than just having a very plain shroud, what they would do is they would create, uh, it's a little bit like a carpet book, they would actually create a, excuse me, <coughs> They were three oh, swatches. You've then got the different elements. Now, uh, Kellett, he was a Freemason. So, uh, if you're familiar with the Freemason's colours, then what happens is the pale blues and purples. That's West Ham the... colours as well. But it's also, we're here in Birmingham, and we've got Aston Villa, who are also playing claret and blue. Ooh. So, having developed an Aston Villa shroud, which was actually a follow on from the Masonic shroud, 
And what they did was they started making Birmingham city shrouds as well. Oh, really? <laughs> so uh, you, know, you wow. could be buried in your you could be buried in your city cut in your. Yeah, here's a shroud. We've um, we've worked on this one slightly. This one's been sewn together, mm -hmm. and I'll explain what I mean with regards to that in a little while. But what happens is you'll notice it's very tall. Mm -hmm. They are one size fits all, however, um, because what you do is if somebody's tall, all you do is you just tuck it in at the bottom because it's a bit like a hospital gown. It's open at the back. <laughs> so what happens is the body's laying there within the coffin. Mm -hmm. Body's already got rigor set in, mm -hmm. so what happens is the arms are being folded across them. It's then very easy. You see that it's, you know, this is pinned at the back. It's open at the back. You literally just lay it around the body and you tuck it in underneath. Right. Now the problem with the arms is the arms are already folded. I said that what we've done is we've sewn these arms in. Mm -hmm. So let me show you how the arms look. We just turn around and go to that table. So here's an arm. What happens is I open it up. You know, so what happens is it's just, oh, I've gone inside the lining. You know, so what happens is it's just a cuff that's attached. And what happens is the rest of it is open. So all I need to do is it's much easier for me to then, you know, if the body's laying like this, is for me to just do this yeah. and then just tuck it around and make it look neat, tuck it in. So it looks absolutely fine. By the time we clocked out, we had learned a great deal about the curious world of the funeral furniture.